Hello podcast, okay, I'm coming to you on a Sunday afternoon and I have an unplanned segment for you because Elizabeth Gordon was at the mall and I started thinking, well, I wanna do a segment where we go to Pizman's Cheese Sticks and I've been looking at this on fucking Postmates. Oh, hold on, there she is. I gotta get an imagery of her for you guys because she be looking. Here he is, he's coming in with a hot mic. You stole the Costco cart and you're no, gonna leave no, it there? No, don't do that. What? I, that is not my Costco cart. I put my Costco cart back. I don't know that, that you did. That cart was just there and do not blaspheme my name right now. I can't have another week of this. Get in the car. Bitch. <sighs> trying to cover up trying her Trying to lie name. on my name. <laughs> trying to cover up Bitch, her good that name. is not my cart. Everyone saw. No, like, yeah, was... everyone saw and knows okay, it's not my goddamn cart. I was tired of holding six pounds of turkey meat waiting for your fucking ass bitch wow do you know she's what my still day is? holding resentment do you know what Shouldn't my day you is? have had a fun day shopping at the mall yeah you would think i would think yeah unfortunately the answer to that is no <laughs> proof that that's not my cart i carried over the okay. six pounds of turkey meat i'm not mad at you yeah okay what have you been doing i've had a, a fucking day bro why so well first excitingly uh-huh um like he graduated his school? Yeah, he's and a little graduate. Does he act well? He sits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta figure out where we're going because I am not a professional. Well, I was just telling them, so I had this wonderful idea. I've been seeing on DoorDash this cheese stick place. Yeah. And I think it's like home owned. Oh my gosh, like those famous cheese bowls. He does like talkies. Let's he go. does cereal. Okay, I'm just trying to okay, find... Okay, you look it up. I'll tell you what else uh-huh. happened. So the good news was Icky graduated. And then Joe and I get in the car to go home and I lean over from the driver's seat to the back seat to get water to give Icky some water in the car because he likes to drink before we go. Uh-huh. And Joe doesn't look when he sits in the car completely squishes my fucking face to the point that I'm scream crying because he's just thrown all 250 pounds of his weight into my fucking face with my glasses on. I'm not kidding. Like I'm probably going to have a black eye tomorrow. This shit hurts so bad. Instantly start scream crying. And then I realize, oh, this bitch broke my fucking glasses. The new ones you my just brand got? My fucking glasses. No. So I'm like, my glasses are like sideways. I just got them fixed at Costco. Thank God. Cause I went in and I was like, my glasses. She's like a crooked. I was like, did yeah. you get them at Costco? No, but she just can fix them. Yeah, Costco's the shit, dude. I can't believe you can brave that place on a Sunday. Do I to love each their Costco? Own. Well, that was my silver lining. So then I'm like, whatever. I guess I'll try to like make myself feel better by vlogging, making a capsule wardrobe for my trip to New York. Right. But I bought this fucking trench coat. This quote oversized oh, trench coat. Fuck. You can get out that oh, way. Oh, I can. Yeah. Okay. This oversized trench coat from Abercrombie, and when I put it on, I look like a fucking little girl playing Inspector Gadget, and it is not the fucking make. <laughs> okay, like, but one of my favorite movies ever. Yeah, not a good look for me right now, though. <laughs> That was my tiny head and my crooked glasses. Um, so I go to return it at Abercrombie for some like linen shorts or something that's also part of the capsule wardrobe like checklist. What does capsule wardrobe mean? Capsule, watch my vlog and find out. <laughs> capsule wardrobe. <laughs> capsule wardrobe means like just every piece goes with every piece. Okay. So you can buy like 10 pieces. Like you only have to bring two shirts on vacation, but you can have 15 outfits. Got it. Um, there's no more Abercrombie and Fitch in this mall. I drove home. Icky's class is over here. I drove home from Icky's class, came all the way the fuck back here to go to that fucking Abercrombie, and that bitch is closed until fall of 2021. Why? God knows. <laughs> God knows. So I'm stuck with this fucking raincoat. Well. <laughs> and seems then like I you're to, having an awful day. Yeah, and then I go to tri- fucking Nordstrom Rack because I have a gift card for there, and then this bitch calls me, and he's like, just leave everything. Go, leave all your things no. so we can go get cor- I get said, I, I know you're right next to where I want to go and I looked at the map and it just so happens to be closed on Monday. So I was like, we've got to go there today or nothing. No, I'm excited for it. Honestly, that shit looks bomb. When I saw what it was, it's when I really changed my mind. Right. And I wasn't the one that said you need to abandon what you're doing. I said, I'll pick you up wherever it you're was, at. It wasn't but verbatim. You had to get, you was, had to go get your five six, pounds, six. six pounds of raw turkey for your docks yeah. at Costco. Yeah. How dare I? How dare you before it closes? Sorry. I'm just trying to make sure we're going in the right direction. Yeah. You've got three more lights before you turn up the third light. Whew. 
What have you been doing? Oh, I guess you've been talking. Yeah. Have you started watching Selling Sunset? No. It's I don't, all I want to talk I about. Don't. I don't know how it couldn't be for everyone. I don't know how like you couldn't have been waiting in anticipation for 12 o'clock Thursday afternoon. Are they all out? Yes. I'll go every home. Here's one. what I'll do. I'll go home after this. I'll watch it while I make my capsule wardrobe. And then we can talk about it when we come back after the break. Okay. It's just... So, for well, them, this is the, the end. No, I think we should do it the opposite way. You think this should be the beginning yeah. of our show? Yeah. You're wild. Because what are we going to do tomorrow? Just shit talk this and then make them watch this? Fuck no, bro. We're going to do this. We're going to show this first. Okay, I just have to say it's the show for me because I do really think that the production sees clouds in the forecast and they're like, that's not selling the fantasy. We've got to hold off. Okay. You know, I think they go to that extreme I, I, of length. I really think you should wait and talk about it with an informed person okay. in about 20 minutes. Okay, I'm just so excited to talk about it. I know, we'll get there. It's we'll like get there. all I want to do with my life. I'll get there for you. You know what? I will do that for you. Thank you. I canceled my Nordstrom rack. I left all the stuff in my basket. Said Did you have anything you needed? No, I gave up on the capsule wardrobe. It was really hard. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth, I'm okay. And bitch, we are going to... Oh my gosh. I know you guys have all seen the pool cheese sticks, but this guy, he has set it up in front of his house. And when I tell We're you the going flavors to looking, home right now? I believe that's what it is. Like if you haven't watched the Shane video, anyone can just add themselves to DoorDash, which could be questionable, but this is honestly that. something I trust. He has like I'm a whole thing set up in front of his house where he deep fries these cheese sticks into wow. such wonderful creations. Just read us off some of the, let's plan what we're gonna get. I think I'm, wow. So this is confusing for me. There's, he has like cereal flavored ones. Mm -hmm. He has a potato dog. Mm -hmm. He has a flaming hot dog, a Takis Ooh, dog. We're getting the Takis dog. He has the, I hate Takis. He has Cocoa Pebbles. Does he have a hot Cheetos dog? Yeah, flaming okay, hot Cheetos, Fruity Pebbles dog, Cinnamon Toast Crunch dog. A Cheetos dog. I could be down with a straight ass Cheetos dog. Mm. We could do a Cheetos dog and a Takis dog if you need to do the Takis. Do you really like Takis? Let's talk about Takis. No, I hate Takis. I think they're too flavorful. I think it's like the I think worst. Your Takis taste like a cheap corn chip. I think it's the worst version of a hot Cheeto. I agree, but why did you say you wanted the Takis flavor then? Like because it just it. looks so delicious in the photo. I didn't know hot Cheetos was an option. But you, I do have a hot take about Takis that they suck. Yeah, but, but you just seemed so lit on a Takis. You would literally did your. Mm? Have you seen the photo of it? On yeah, this? but it's as a woman, it's making me think that I'm gonna like it. Stop screaming. Sorry. <laughs> You're doing your fucking. Pro What's it called? Your host voice. Oh my gosh. Don't host voice. What's it called? I can I can introduce this in my host voice. You have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're screaming at me. On today's episode of The Sip, Ryland and Lizzie are headed to Pete's Min Cheese. Pete, Pete, Pete Man's. Pete, we're headed to Pete Man's Cheese, cheese Dogs. dogs. Oh, Woo yeah. uh, should we just pick up an order for delivery on Postmates? Do you think that would be easier? Because so, we're not taking the car vlog out there. Right. Yeah. But how do we do that? Should we just order it when we're parked and not in the middle of Van Owen? And well, fucking I was DeSoto? trying to save time, but yeah, whatever. No, no, no. Don't do it at the intersection. Stop, stop the car. <laughs> <laughs> People always be acting like I'm dangerous. Uh, is that because you're dangerous? <laughs> I love coming on this vlog. Aside from watching Selling Sunset for like the entire weekend, yeah. I've just been trying to figure out how to feed two babies at once as one person. Yeah, I don't, I, I have been thinking about that for you also. It's like, I, it's, it's not going to be a rude naked awakening. It's going to be a brutal fucking awakening. <laughs> Because you are you guys are not going to have a single second of downtime. Do you understand that? I understand. You're both on. You can't, you can't tag out for the homie. I'm trying both to tell you. Both homies are on cue at the same time. The amount of 24 hours in the life of a newborn that I have consumed in the past three days is like... Are you tripping? Uh, I'm not tripping. It's just like... The idea of two is the scary part. No, of that's it, what I'm saying. Like, found it. Two is crazy. Wow, this is kind of epic. He's got a whole ass fucking thing going wow, on Wow, you need to record this. As you we're know I am, daddy. Mm, Shit. Mom, me. Oh my God. We're just going to have to park and get out there. I also got to find us better lighting when we like get situated. You're so funny about the lighting. I know. It looks like shit right if now. If the lighting was best at this fucking intersection, Whoa, it's right Oh, zoom into those. Oh wow. my gosh. He has a ring light. I bet he's wow. TikToking. Wow. Jesus. And there's an open house. He's on the news. I think we could just park right here, right? God bless him. What's going on here? Some stretching? I guess so. You didn't record him, did you? I did, but that's just for me. <laughs> we won't. Use. That's just for me. Wow, and we got front row parking to Peepman's Cheese Dogs. We should learn how to say it. It's I think probably Peepman's, right? Peepman's Cheese Dogs. 
<laughs> I'm sure he's on TikTok. Okay, we're gonna well, go get I our do, food. I also want to keep talking about this baby and thing, we'll though, be because right this back. is the first time you've acknowledged that it's about to be wild <laughs> in your life. Oh my gosh, it's all happening for us. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Right, can I but, see my coochies? Before we even get to this food, here, I'll put these in here. I just have to say, we got like seven dogs. Bro, this shit smells so good. We got the corn and it was $44. I'm gonna say that's a How freaking many did we steal. Get? So many. One, two, three, four. But we can't taste one because it's for Shane. We got five dogs and the corn. I mean, yeah, I did get one for Shane. So we can't taste that one, right? I feel like it'd be rude if I we I think it'd be insanely it. rude if we tasted it. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good it in this so car. It smells so good, bro. I'm so hungry. Wow, this is... <gasps> okay, nobody's going, what? Okay, is this lighting gonna be okay? Cause... Yeah. It, oh, this is fine. So I got the little corn in a cup too. Which I was semi opposed to. And that's fine. I didn't think to ask for a second spoon, but I will be sharing the spoon with you. We're not of, sitting in the middle okay. of the street. Of course in the middle of the street. The oh my fine. God. Mm. Is it good? Wow. And you didn't want that. Hmm. You always shit on the corn and then I get you the corn. Corn's very underrated for some reason. Dude, corn is the bomb. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Corn goes so hard. And the crispies are like a little subtle, but then they like punch you with an aftertaste. Mm. Okay, that guy wasn't pissed that I was in the middle of the street. Get oh us one God. of these dogs. We gotta get one of these dogs, baby. Oh, this one's hot Cheeto. Mm, I think it's hot fries. I don't know. That one looks like it might just be a regular ass guy, huh? Kind of. Did they fuck us? Ooh, oh, she's messy. <gasps> wow. Okay. I'm gonna dip it in a ranch. No, we gotta get a cheese pull without you, first. What? Okay, cheers. Oh my god. Don't go. <laughs> wow. Wait, what the fuck? They fucked up our order. Mmm, that is so good. That is? I mean, we ordered like 20 dogs, so you just gotta relax. Oh my god. Wow. Mm. Oh my god, it's still incredible. Wow. What's in yours? Nothing, just cheese? Mm -hmm. oh we my didn't gosh. even order that one. Just no, this right. is the spicy Cheeto. Oh, it is? Yeah, this is the hot Cheeto. Trade me. Oh, oh wow, this has a lot of Cheeto dust on it. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh my god. No, this has the pepper jack cheese in it. Mm. Wow, I love the Cheeto dust. Mm -hmm. The Cheeto dust is everything. Mm -hmm. mm. I do have to say I'm a little disappointed there's no hot dogs in any of these. Well, I wow. It's not the cleanest thing to eat in the car. Well, then get your one with the hot dogs so that you can be there satisfied. There is no one with the hot dogs. Yeah, you got the garlic one no, with the hot dog. No, we literally didn't put a hot dog in the I garlic I promise one. you that you did. No, he said you don't want to put a hot dog in the garlic so one. So we got no hot dogs. That's why I'm saying I'm disappointed. Wow. And I love that you don't care. Well, I really don't. <laughs> but I'm having one of those fucking days. Do you want to go back and get one with the hot dog? Absolutely not. I think we're also missing some. I mean, we had a very complicated order. So, bless his heart. And it's delicious. I don't know about this Fruity Pebbles situation. I don't either. In fact, I begged you not to do the well, Fruity Pebbles. Well, the Fruity Pebbles is specifically for the video. Whoa. Oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. Look at this beautiful bitch. Oh, my God. No cheese, just a dog. Oh, that's what he suggested. No. No, he did. I, I, pr I promise you, he said, do you don't want cheese, just a dog. Hmm. Interesting. Wow, thank mm. God. You want a bite of this. Oh, God. Is it good? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is it better than any of the other Here, ones? Fuzz, I Excuse me? Fuzz, with your dog. Okay. Thumbnails! Wow. That cheese is ridiculous. Mm. Mm. You know what? The Fruity Pebbles might be my favorite. In for a real? Yeah. Which is crazy because I got it as like a, gotta get something gross to try for the video. And I think it's my favorite. Mm. Wow. We should put those on OnlyFans. 
If you want to see him finish one of these. Is that really good? Mm-hmm. How garlicky is the garlic? Not very. Mm. Wow. This is incredible. And it's a little spicy. Ooh, I'm gonna Ooh. like that. After you take the... Do you want the bite with the, the ranch and the ketchup? Okay. Your car is fucked. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That, that is incredible. Yeah. Mm. We should fuck it. See, the ones with the hot dogs feel more like a, Corn dog? a, a meal. Yeah. The ones with the cheese just feel like a fun snack. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Oh, gosh. We have people walking oh, through. Oh, my God. What? Hot dog. Oh, there's a, is that the, oh, my gosh. Wow. This is the messiest thing on earth. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah, that's good, but it's definitely like a meal. We're a nightmare. The worst. Wow, Pete, man. These dogs, bro. I'm gonna need that. So good, bro. Mm. And you've got to try the. Whew. I'm gonna push her up. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Mm. We should have eaten this outside. See. Mm. Burning hot. She's always disappointed before she actually experiences what's going on. And I take it all back. I Thank don't think you. there's anything wrong with our order. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can acknowledge when you're wrong, okay? I can. That's something I can do. Oh my gosh. Um, I think I want another one with mainly cheese. And there's corn. Ooh. Do you have anything else going on in life we can talk about while we're eating? I'm going to New York tomorrow. And so what are your plans while you're there? I'm going to see some shows. Hmm. I'm gonna vlog with my dad. You are? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. And I'm gonna check out Orange Theory in the big city. Gotta do that. Gotta do that. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Did you just give up on a piece of cheese? Well, yeah, because I don't want to get too sick, but I want to keep eating. <laughs> mm. I've never done a mukbang before. Do you literally just have to eat the whole time? I mean, we can stop whenever we want. Damn, I made no top of show. Do you want to do hot topics or do you want to do that in the... Mm, 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 mm. You don't have anything going on with your life this week? I feel like I must, right? <laughs> oh, I had my meeting with the manager. Oh my God. Oh my God. And how did it go? It went so fucking good. I was super nervous. Are you repped? I'm calling myself repped. She does not know that I'm saying that about myself. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, she's my manager. Um... So, I get there early, because I'm nervous, and I don't want to fuck it up, so I'm like, get there early, make sure you're comfortable, go to the bathroom, fix your hair, sit down, do some journal manifestations, learn some Taylor Swift lyrics, and while I'm there, I get an email from her assistant saying, can we change the location for the meetup? And you're like, I've already been at the previous location for yeah. 10 minutes. And so then I was like, I'm going to be late. <laughs> So then I rush out of the fucking location I'm at, which by the way, I had actually panic parked at the second location. <laughs> so my car was already there. Hold on, bro. I'm just you trying to find better light. I'm so sorry, but I just can't. You're so wild. So, oh, and also I kept panicking that I was too hot and I was going to faint because I fainted before and it doesn't, it's bad. It's a bad look. <laughs> so I kept taking my undershirt off and putting it in my purse and then getting cold and putting it back on. And then, sorry, I'm vomiting in my mouth now from eating too much. And then I get to the second location and she's 40 minutes late. Wow. Yeah. 40 minutes late? Yeah. Can you be repped by somebody that was 40 minutes was, late to I your meeting? I was so embarrassed. I was like, she's standing me up in a way that says, do not ever slide into the I DMs can't believe again. you were embarrassed and not mad. I mean, I get it. Like she, what did she say when she got there? She didn't have my right phone number, so she was not. She, I wasn't hearing from her because she was texting the wrong but number. But she has her assistant's number, who coordinated with you. I gave the her my wrong number. I gave her my wrong number. Okay, so did and she have an excuse? And the assistant kept saying she's she should be there. She should be there. Um, her child, which is a fine excuse. Okay, that is a fine excuse. Yeah, so I wasn't <laughs> mad. And then I was a little nervous through the whole thing, but it's like hard not to be. Right. And then at the end of it. She really liked my two ideas that I'm working on right now. And I have first drafts of each of them. Mm -hmm. She advised me which one to do a second draft on. And she said, send it when you're done. And is it allowed to... I know since there's like the writer's strike, I guess it's not writing to get a manager, right? Right. 
Wow. Mm. I was confused. Oh, and then about... I went to the picket line. And I picketed at Fox. And? It was a great time. There are free pretzels. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. Like, I under, I understand, like, showing up physically for something, but I didn't know that, like, picketing had more of a meaning than just that. Right. Because I was like, isn't them show not showing up to work statement enough to remind them every day that, like, changes need to be made? For them to go back to work and you were like well no when they're standing there with pickets other people and other unions can't cross the picket lines into their job yeah so ha what? Well, they shouldn't it's not that they can't they shouldn't in solidarity they shouldn't so if an actor's a writer and they get an acting job mm -hmm. if there's writers striking outside of the studio lot where they have a job inside to act are they not supposed to like are they just supposed to call out and say hey there's picketers out here i can't act today i think it's in solidarity with the writers guild i'm not crossing the line so then they just get fired from the job because the production's going to keep production. They can, in. and it happens like that in all unions. You know, if you don't show up for work, they have the right to fire you. Well, I was listening to um, some people discussing what happened last time there was a writer strike, and they kind of forced a lot of the late night television hosts to come back on air who had decided to strike with their employees. Right. By threatening to like fire everyone. They're like, we're going to lose our advertisers. We need you to show up. Yeah. And they were expect what they expected the late night hosts to write their own monologues. Well, no, because that would be scabbing. Oh, because they're probably in the writer's union, too. Even if they're not. If I were to write something for a guild right now, for a, so for they a have, signatory... They if have I were to, to improv? Some of them improv One time, Conan O'Brien sat at his desk and spun his wedding ring, and he's like, I guess we're gonna... I'm sorry for the burping. I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> he's like, I guess we're gonna watch how long my wedding ring takes to stop spinning on my desk, and that was one of his opening monologues. <laughs> like, wow. So, it gets kind of hairy... There are some people who are being, like, forced to work under the guise of, like, a different title that's not a, quote, writing title, but it's still a, quote, writing job, mm -hmm. which is kind of confusing. So, like, I think the guy who's in charge of The Mandalorian is still technically working as a showrunner, which they're claiming is not a guild, a writer's guild position, but, like, it is. I feel so sick. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be repped, one of your scripts is going to get picked up, mm -hmm. and you're going to have the best year of your life. She's like, this script sounds like such a commercial idea and such an easy, so I'll do that first. Is it the one that you're recent working on recently? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so too. Like, when you told me, I was like, got it, girl. I was originally going to set it in 2008 because that was my heyday. What was that noise? Me burping and maybe puking. <laughs> what did it sound like? This is a lot. Why did it sound like a toot? No, it was not a toot. I'm going to have, like, I was, like, about to eat healthy again, too. Me, too. I've been, like, <laughs> this is nuts. So good. The cheese bowls were epic. If you're in Woodland Hills, you've got to come here. Bro. Just don't eat it in your car. If you're anywhere within the TMZ, you need to come here. Should we go get a car wash right now? Look at how many crumbs I have everywhere. Wow. Am I crummy? <laughs> 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 you could tell me. Okay, well, tomorrow we're going to be more organized. We're going to have some great top of show stories for you and hopefully some good hot topics. Plus, oh my God, can we finally talk about Selling Sunset tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to go watch it right now. Okay, well, there's 11 episodes. Bro, I'm only I'm seven dying. in. I'm okay. dying. I might not have a vlog this week. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Lizzie Sells Things. Yesterday, when Rylan and I were driving around in the Tessie, mm -hmm. things were getting a little hot and heavy. And I noticed that my boy here suffers from severe booty sweat. Yeah, those Tesla seats, girl, they be hot. They so be hot. Thank God for our sponsor, Lumi. Lumi has a wide array of different deodorant products. Looming, looming. Ooh, girl. From a standard stick, of which I wear every day and I'm wearing right now. Can you smell the toasted coconut? Does it make you want to fucking eat me? I'll lick you for sure. Ooh. Lick me! Okay, keep going. Okay. I have transferred over to using the Lumi products because they have like rub-on deodorant, stick deodorant, a whole wide array of options and a whole wide array of scents. And if you know anything about me, you know I've recently started suffering from a little bit of chub rub between my thighs. I have started taking the Lumi product, putting it on my thighs before I go somewhere if I'm wearing like loose fit 
cutting pants or if my, I'm wearing a skirt. And the Lumi product that I put between my legs completely eliminates the horrible fucking rashy burn I get from my chub rub. So I am a big fan of this product. I also love that you can put it anywhere. You can put it on your feet. You can put it on your privates. You can literally anywhere you're having odor, solve it with Lumi. And it's safe. This is the type of deodorant that you can use where you don't have to be worried about added aluminums or whatever that stuff is that you're like, if you think about it, you put deodorant on every day. And if you're putting aluminum that close to your pores in your armpits, it's too close to your heart. It's too close to your thyroid. I'm not a fan of it, but I am a fan of Lumi. Like Lizzie said, it's aluminum free, baking soda free, and paraben free. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off of a Lumi starter pack with code SIP at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code SIP. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like mini body wash or deodorant wipes. I also really love the deodorant wipes. And that comes with free shipping. Once again, that's lumideodorant.com and use code SIP. You won't regret it. Wow. Wow. In what may have been our best show ever. Yeah. Chris, you're fired. Chris, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so we started rolling and then we realized we the rolling cut itself. <sighs> so we're back after a few announcements. Christmas movie canceled. Right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Bad actor. Okay, hold on. <laughs> no, and- I did say, you know what? <sighs> Do we try to recreate or do we just put that six minutes of only audio at the end of the show? We could put the six minutes of only audio at the end of the show. Okay. If you want to hear our best work, you know what? Just go to the end. I think, it. you know what? I do think it was some of our best work. I honestly do too. It's going to be black screen and you're just going to have to... Uh, try to visualize It's going to be like a real podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Just like the audio real girls only. <laughs> Okay, so I... Th- what? I do think that we stopped talking before I was able to say that I completely blacked out driving home after eating those corn dogs. Don't know how I got there. Was sick to my stomach in a catatonic state. Had to make my dog's dinner and then pack for New York and filmed packing for New York. Wow. I wonder what that footage is going to cut together like. Well, we'll all find out on Lizzie's vlogs. What's your vlog channel name? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's it might jump. be Elizabeth's vlogs. Uh, I think it's Elizabeth. I don't know. I have a vlog channel. It will be linked in the description section below. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay. So I think we'll jump right into Selling Sunset because it's all I can think about. I mean, honestly, I want to finish the ep- the seasons right now. How many episodes are there? 11? 11. And we're I'm both on, on episode 10. We're both on episode 10. Yesterday, I told him I would watch all of it, and I did. Wow. I've been watching it in 1.25 speed. That's wild because don't it you is wild. enjoy it? I am enjoy enjoying it? it. I'm upset that I'm at work right now instead of finishing Selling Sunset. And okay, it looks like the story that you pulled from it first is Nick Cannon allegedly Oh, no, no, no. These well, are hot topics. I thought we were going to talk about Selling Sunset. Uh, this is Selling Sunset. I mean, it's a good thing to segue into after we talk about Selling Sunset. I mean, this is one of the best parts about Selling Sunset is the new addition, which is Brie, which is I a, forgot her a name. recent baby daddy of A baby Nick, mama. A baby mama of Nick cannons yeah and i love her i actually think she's maybe one of the least toxic women on this show which i i i think she's a wonderful addition to this show because in the past or even currently i feel like christine who's no longer on this show as well as the new girl nicole they kind of start drama to start storylines but they can't back them because they created drama for a storyline yeah and then they're like constantly trying to keep the drama alive with nothing yeah. You know, and, and it's nuts. And this this woman, Brie, when something upsets her, she confronts them. But she can also admit when she's wrong or she can accept forgiveness and she can be like, maybe I came in too strong. Yeah, I just like the mixture of her for the I show. absolutely do, too. Like Brie came in hot at Emma because she thought Emma was trying to take one of her clients. Mm-hmm. And when she realized that Emma wasn't trying to take one of her clients, she fully apologized in front of everybody. And I also really like the way that she's handi- handling Chelsea, yeah. who like kind of rubs me as like very fake. And I know that this might just be the kind of woman that she is, but the way that she is to me is so fucking disingenuous and weird. And it might be because she has way too much Botox, but I don't believe a single word she says. And I live for Chelsea on the show because she does bring like this element of 
just like fantasy. I love her yeah. outfits. I love her blue G wagon. I love <laughs> I love what she visually serves on the show. Yeah. And I do think it's fun that she causes up this drama that's rooted in something I think is real for her. Like she does really go head to head with Brie on Brie's lifestyle that Brie didn't necessarily choose. Like I I, I do I I agree with Brie. Yeah. But I think it's fun to have the like I get mad at it, which I think is fun. Yeah, I mean I do feel like in a workplace environment, it is not Chelsea's place to talk about it in the office on the open floor like that while everyone's at their desks. I agree, but they're trying to to create storylines. No, I know. But like I'm talking about if this were because it is real life. She does have a fucking baby by Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. And and I'm positive Chelsea does have that opinion. And I think and she doubled down on that multiple times. Yeah. And and I but I also feel like the where the place that Chelsea is wrong is doing it on the work floor. Take it to brunch. I agree. Take it to brunch, Charles. And the other thing I don't love about this season is that Mary's put in the position of like having to like I hate babysit Jason, the yeah. girls. And I want Mary to be one of the girls. I don't want her having to be facilitating the girls. I feel like Jason is 100% taking advantage of Mary's friendship by making her her his property manager, his office manager. And he's just off gallivanting with his child bride in <laughs> fucking berlin like are you kidding me are you kidding me and he's not even paying her more did you hear the yeah. that one scene where they're like i hope you're getting a raise girl and she's like <laughs> he's just and I'm his friend and she's like hyperventilating like with an iv and she's like i just put my whole life on hold and it's fine because i'm having to be his friend when he goes to berlin like it's pathetic mm-hmm. and i think mary's a bad bitch I love Mary. Yeah. I just don't like that she has to be in this position. I want her to be no, in there with the No, and that's why I hate Jason. Exactly. I think Jason's the bad guy in that scenario. I think it's because he doesn't ne- he never wanted to be necessarily a reality star, so that's right. his way of being like stepping out. Uh, stepping out and you know Which is so, fine, but you got to pay. For I that. agree. And he does serve on the show some good storylines like him and Chriselle and like the first meeting of the minds after uh, like it does like just make my heart wrench a little bit even though I know like half of this is fake, half of this is real, but when those credits hit, I'm just like, wow. You really have me selling Sunset. Like, it's <laughs> so over so the top funny. and ridiculous, but I enjoy nothing more. It's edited so well. It's filmed so well. The drone shots of the house just make me like, oh. Yeah, this is your porn. There's nothing that could have possibly been made for me more than selling Sunset. I, 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 I thought that every fucking second I was watching it at 1.25 speed. I could rewatch <laughs> the entire season and I probably will. I'm gonna, I've been watching it since I left you. Literally had it on in the car, was listening to it like a podcast all the way home, and then I I've been listening to it ever since. The Nicole drama is <clears throat> insane. This- I do not have any energy for Nicole. I think she's hungry and it's making her an angry bitch. Well, did you see what Chriselle posted over the weekend? No. She posted an Instagram post being like, for those of you who need the facts, and she posted like a picture of her and then a s- screenshots a of DMs. A picture of Chriselle that- or a picture of Nicole? Well, a picture of Chriselle. That was just like okay. for her feed, but then you scroll and it's a DM that Nicole had sent Chriselle and it's it was when she first got offered a contract for the show because Nicole has been an agent at the Opperheim Group, Opera, whatever it is, for a long long time and so I guess producers after Christine left offered her a two-year contract and so Nicole DM'd Chriselle and was like you're the professional at this they offered me a two-year contract I'm so like I can't believe it I would love to get together Sue because I know you're like the pro at this and she was like really friendly with Chriselle and wanted to Mm -hmm. like start on a good foot and I like even Nicole starting drama with Chriselle on the show over a listing from three years ago that Chriselle didn't even get a commission from it's just like she did no, uh, Christine said, I never took Nicole. money from that cell. Oh, Chriselle. Oh. Sorry, this is getting confusing. Yeah. Um, it's all so ludicrous. Well, to me, it really came like, no matter what, Nicole keeps bringing it up. And everyone around Nicole keeps being like, I can't do this with you anymore. And she's like, me neither. Me neither. But it's like, no, you brought it up. And you the- brought it up over and over and over and over again. Christine or Chriselle finally like, extends a bridge giving her a compliment yeah. at dinner and then Nicole immediately turns around and was like well I was going to get lawyers involved and I got a drug test and it's like yeah. okay so then you bring it you can't even ever stay in the, peace bitch the backstory on this drama if you haven't watched Selling Sunset is there's a new woman called Nicole and Chriselle is the old sweetheart of the show and they have beef over some shit that went down three years ago that's so fucking convoluted that I don't even understand it after you explained it to me four seconds ago <laughs> and I've watched all of this in the last 30 minutes <laughs> 
So they're having these like head to head fights all the time because Nicole just keeps talking shit about Chriselle. Comes in comes in hot at like work meetings being like, Chriselle's got a victim narrative and I fucking hate her. And it's like, whoa, dude, we were just here to eat some fucking oysters and sell some $10 million houses. Like we're, everything's cool, girl. And, and then she's like, you're right, everything is cool, but fuck Chriselle, I hate her, I want her dead. And then Chriselle comes out and she's like, you're being a bitch. And she's like, <gasps> Chriselle called me a bitch bitch and then she blows it up to the next person who comes in Chriselle called me a fucking bitch and then it's Chriselle had me at gunpoint in a dark alley and called me a fucking bitch and it just keeps snowballing from there and so they're at dinner one night and Chriselle's like girl are you on crack like what the fuck and then she goes <gasps> you don't tell people I'm on crack this is gonna that's gonna fuck up my whole life you can't tell people I'm on crack and they're on vacation in Palm Springs and she goes off in the morning and gets drug tested after talking to a lawyer because of the one statement of like you're on crack or whatever and then she's like I just sent you to know I spoke to a lawyer I got drug tested to prove to you that I do not do crack in she's fact she's coming off too strong and yeah. if she should have learned anything from Christine not coming back to the show it's that Christine would start storylines that had no had no had nothing behind them i almost have more respect for christine's hawk malarkey than i do nicole's because nicole seems authentically emotionally invested in the in the drama that she's spewing don't get me wrong i love christine i also like uh chelsea i love the visuals that christine brought to the show i loved the over the topness mm -hmm. her life her marriage now she has a baby i loved all of it but the drama that's just baseless that's like for a right. storyline just doesn't really work i completely agree with you and i still feel like christine's baseless drama was more based than nicole's because nicole's literally like i did something wrong and now i'm a victim and it's like whoa what are you lizzie gordon what's going on here <laughs> um okay so then uh, there uh, at one point and this is the last thing we'll talk about on selling sunset uh brie says that after 10 kids in california you don't have to pay child support her lawyer actually came out after the fact and made a statement being like no they do in fact have to pay child support at any amount of do kids. you think nick cannon told her that <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, Nick Cannon was also on an interview. He's like, no, girl, I don't got to pay you child support. I got more than 10 kids. Why he, do you think I had more than 10 kids? Nick Cannon was also on a podcast recently, and he was saying, I view my bank account as their bank account. I don't follow the typical, like, law when it comes to what I need to give mm -hmm. all of these I'm not baby just giving mamas. them a check once a month. He said, whatever they need, they get. I view my bank account as their bank account, and there's a lot of money in this bank. It's not going to run out. That's, like, what Did, he said flat out. I love that for him and also like did he talk about what this is all about like because i've never known what this is all about like why does he want so many kids i have no idea and i think that was the root of chelsea's point is that like if you have 12 kids with six or seven moms there is no physical amount of time that you could be present for all of those children's lives because they're like different moms in different towns mm -hmm. in different homes mm -hmm. and so like i understand where chelsea's coming from but it's not her place i don't think to be blasting that to the world no and i also think that there's like a lot of people who singly parent a home of and course. it works out but i i'm like i do want to know like what his what this is all about for him like i want to know like is this intentional like is he intentionally having 12 babies like what well, is that's what started this drama on the show is right after he had his kid with Bree, he had another a baby. month later a different woman gave birth to nick cannon's child and Bree was blindsided he didn't even know yeah that she didn't know that nick cannon had another person pregnant so i don't know i mean i guess nick cannon just loves having kids i guess i want to know the philosophy behind it I you guess know what i mean is there one or are we just like shooting shots we're like, gonna we have just, to we just taking every shot we can shoot i'm gonna have shoot to do it? a deep dive i haven't seen him talk about that element in any of these interviews or stories about this that i've read do you mind googling that nick cannon baby machine philosophy <laughs> <laughs> those are the keywords i would search <laughs> okay i did love this next story you put on the document uh, Taylor Lautner. <laughs> so it's been announced that Speak Now is Taylor Swift's next, like Taylor's version yes. album. Taylor Lautner. God, I'm so excited. Was, when you said that, like my nipples got hard. Taylor Lautner was written about alongside John Mayer yeah. on that album, allegedly. Yeah, but 
Taylor Lautner's always been very positively spoken about, like back to December is Taylor Lautner. And it's just like, I go back to December. Like, it's nice. So Taylor Lautner's on the Today Show and they ask him about this new album being re-released. And he said, I feel safe, but praying for John. Which is so funny. (laughs) And I guess are people like in, it's going viral, but what are people's thoughts on it? Are they? I mean, everybody fucking hates John. Really? Yeah. John Mayer's yeah, John Mayer's not being looked at in a positive light in this way because he was a narcissistic douchebag in the relationship and every time he's been asked i mean i I read a a clip in this article from 2012 where he was talking about how he thought their relationship was fine they broke up semi amicably and then he was blindsided without a call or a text or whatever and he's like listen this is just what i the quote right and i read the same quote and from the same quote i'm garnering that he is a narcissist who doesn't understand his part and the weight of his actions I in a relationship. I don't recall what song is about him or what he allegedly did to her. This was like, what, in 2010? If you want to sit down and do a deep dive into the lyrics for TikTok, I think we really should. What's it might the be song as- about him? Dear John. Oh, d- okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will have to do it. There's a few dive. songs about him, but the, the bottom line is to go out publicly and say, I'm offended that someone spoke honestly about my part in their relationship with me and I don't feel the same way because I'm offended by their honesty. To me, it's like Anne Lamont said in Bird by Bird, if you want me to speak nicely about you, behave nicely. But there is also a thing. That's not I the mean, quote. I totally butchered that quote. If you read Anne Lamont, you know it's if you something about be do better. Be a nice person. I, I'm not standing up for anyone. I don't yeah. even know the details of this story, but there yeah. is a, every story has two sides. And it is when the most powerful pop star releases a song that everyone knows is about you Mm -hmm. when that wasn't your version of the story Mm -hmm. it would be hard to swallow all of that hate and i'm not standing up for him i don't know the details Yeah, be careful tread lightly swift is becoming for you the short answer is when asked why so many in regards to having kids canon explained that he finds being a dad rewarding good for him if it works it works I guess we'll find out. You, you, you I guess we'll like find Kelsey out in right like, no, I mean, I guess reaction. we'll find out in like 15 years if it's working. You know what I'm saying? I mean, ask Mariah Carey. She has twins with the man that are a little bit older now. Yeah. Can you see how Mariah Carey feels about <laughs> oh Nick <my> Cannon? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't know her. <laughs> um, no, I'm I, I'm not speaking. Whatever. Just Fuck be off tr- them, you should be I don't scared. Care. I love Taylor Swift. You should Swift. be scared. If they want to come for me, then they're coming don't, for somebody. Don't who, in, don't in, don't. You're being the internet. No, that I they hate will right now. find your address. I just said I don't they know will that. Break it into glitter in all your rugs. Shut up. <laughs> I have empathy for anyone that gets rolled around in the chaos of the internet because the punishment n- doesn't really ever truly fit the crime, and I do believe that. To be honest, I don't know enough about John. Me either. That's what I'm saying. No, to side with you right now. Because <laughs> he's he always has rubbed me the wrong way. Okay. Whatever. I hate waking up too early and making banana pancakes. So, I find it fucking enraging. I thought it was hilarious that Taylor Lautner did this. His wife was like, oh, I know you. I knew you made an uh, oopsie daisy right in the moment. <laughs> but like, I don't know who could actually be mad at him for that. It was pretty whatever. No, but it's like a little bit putting your foot in your mouth, you know? Whatever. And then they asked what, if Why are you mad at that? me about it? Because you were acting like I was being... Like, whatever. I, I am I'm mad con- at you about it. I'm concerned for your safety. Oh, okay. Uh, then they asked uh, them if they're going to go to the Taylor Swift concert. Um, and H- Taylor's new wife said... Who's also named Taylor. Lautner. Yeah. They're both Taylor Lautner. They're both Taylor it's Lautner. Too much. If there's ever a time to hyphenate or to not take a last name, it's, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but they said... They asked if they were going to go to the Taylor Swift concert. And the wife was like, absolutely. I'm the biggest Swifty in the world, which is a little weird. Dude, I, it's so fucking hard because I think about it and I always think back to Miley Cyrus's tweet. Like, I really want to go see The Hunger Games, but I don't really want to watch my ex in this movie for three hours. <laughs> and I, that's awful. That is awful. Imagine being a fan of something and you can't enjoy it because fucking. Wow. Also, if my husband was like, I love Taylor Swift and I used to be inside her. Can we go to the Eras tour? I'd be like, you may not come. <laughs> Mariah and Nick supposedly have a good relationship still, and she thinks he is a good dad. Great. Bree says he is too. And guess who wow. bought their baby mama a Lamborghini Yaris for her birthday? Oh my God. Nick Cannon. Do you think you should have had babies with Nick Cannon? <laughs> Nick Cannon dropped Bree a fucking Lamborghini Yaris on her uh, birthday. 
It's wild. Is Shane like in danger? I should send him that picture. <laughs> you should actually. Mm-hmm. You should say Nick Cannon bought her a Yaris and he's got 12 <laughs> kids and you've only got two. Nut up or shut up, dad. We only have five minutes because we already went for six on audio. So we have to choose the best of the best of the best. Um. Uh, okay. Okay. Damn, both of these are weak as hell. Okay, should we go to advice? <laughs> Let's do an advice, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's just a headline, the top portion. Let's get into some advice, though. I am so gassy right now. <sighs> Sorry, I had to burp, but I'm not doing it on, on camera for free. Um, you can catch that on my OnlyFans if it's what you're into. I've been with my fiance. Hey, guys, I need some <laughs> advice. As he doesn't want me to tell anyone, I've been with my fiance for almost eight years. About three to four months ago, he had told me he racked up $60,000 in debt from his gambling addiction. He has been able to do this in one month. Is it wrong for me to want to hold off on getting married until he figures his shit out? No, it's not wrong. Keep in mind, we've been engaged two years now with no plans. Keep waiting. We just <laughs> we just bought a house, and luckily I have a good job to support us. But he told me the loan was for house repairs, renovations, so I just don't know how to feel about it. Oh, my God. Oh, and he doesn't plan on paying the loan back, so he's fucking his credit. Please give me some insight from an outside perspective. I really need it. And that's the end of that one. Um, you definitely don't marry the man until he gets this under control. I mean, gambling is an addiction. A severe addiction. And if he's taking out a loan to go $60,000 in debt. And lying and, to you. And lying to you about it. I would stay as financially free from this person as possible. Yeah. If you guys are both on the house, that's one thing. But I would not tie myself together financially until you're confident he's not only not lying to you, but he has this gambling addiction under control yeah and from what i understand a gambling addiction is a lot like my alcoholism and uh it's a thing i need to work on every day it's not something i'm ever going to be cured of and if i don't work on it i regress spiritually and physically and emotionally so if if he comes to you one day and says i'm cured that's a lie the other thing is that i want to say is um get get him off that house if you guys are both on this house together find a way to sever his part in the house because he could leverage the house and you could lose the house you can lose everything that you're tied to with him and it's not his choice to do that people will come and take your things the scariest part about this is uh, and i i guess and i'm not saying he's a bad person no i uh, know i think he's, he's he has suffering from gambling addiction but i am saying to protect yourself and to protect your family and to protect your future do not become legally tied to any of his assets and do not connect him to any of your assets. And if he currently is, start talking to legal professionals right now about how to untie that. If you have a shared bank account, unshare it because they can freeze those assets and take them to pay back the loans he owes. The problem is when you're addicted to something, you will lie to those closest to you, yeah. which he's already displayed he'll do. Yeah. So. I don't know how you can rebuild that trust, but also how can you plan a future, like a lifelong future with somebody who's doing this much damage financially? Financially, f- Financials are like such a, a sensitive thing that you have to be conscious of yeah. constantly. Well, that's the, that's the most fucked up thing about a gambling addiction is you can rack that up in the blink of an eye. Like it's over. Like in the in the peak of like i i created financial damage when i was using in my relationship and my husband my now husband who was my then fiance Mm -hmm. forgave me and that took you know we put a price tag on it how much money do i owe you from my financial wreckage and i pay it back and i paid it back my bills are paid and uh those are certain things called like those are that's like a living amends and now we keep our finances very clean and clear and it's easier for us to go forward that way. So it's not that you can't love this person, but you do need to get very clear about the boundaries of this love. I love you. I'm not going to support your addiction. Yeah, I agree. And honestly, it's the best thing you can do for an addict is to cut them off. The fire can't keep burning if you take away the oxygen. Mm, it's very hard. Uh, we're definitely thinking of you, and I hope this works out well for you. I hope he really works on this become like a great partner for you and even beyond him working on it because you can't make him do anything you can work on it because this is a trauma like you have been wronged and even though it's different from being like cheated on romantically or physically or emotionally it's a version of betrayal you've been blindsided and lied to 
your future is different. You're, like the perspective of your future is now altered indefinitely. And thank God you weren't married to him already because that $60,000 debt becomes your $60,000 debt, ruins your credit, yeah. ruins your life. Yeah. Really. But what I was going to say is you, there's, you need to work on healing yourself now because you have a wound. It's not just his wound that needs to be healed. You have one. And there are definitely groups. If you like Google like support groups for people who are related to gambling addicts there's places and people and groups that you can look into like I would strongly recommend doing that if you don't already have a therapist that you love or in addition to a therapist that you love and how do you heal if the person's still actively doing this I mean I don't know that's why I'm saying get a group okay. <laughs> get a group of people who have been through it and got to the other side and like learn from what they have been through so that you can have the same experience and the same goes through like the same goes for people who are living with alcoholics, drug addicts, sex addicts, eating disorders. It becomes really hard for a quote, in my program, we call them normies, to be around a person who's afflicted with an addiction or substance abuse issue. And there are support groups for you guys, too, that help you understand the addiction. Because not only does like my alcoholism make my life unmanageable, it makes those around me affected by it as well because mm -hmm. you're all affected by my choices and by my wreckage so do not be afraid to raise your hand right now and say i need fucking help i don't know what to do this is unfamiliar territory to me find someone who knows the territory and who's worked through it and survived to tell the tale and find out what they did right because that's a lot girl okay let's just give our quick thoughts on this last one i thought it would resonate with you this one uh th starting here advice though i'm currently in my third year at chico state go wildcats i know lizzie uh i know lizzie to school here so i wanted some advice i'm in a sorority i live the whole college experience and yet i'm so unhappy here it's such a small town there's nowhere to escape just you're just surrounded by drugs and alcohol the whole time and going to riley's i was wondering if lizzie felt the same or had any advice please keep um me anonymous on the pod i'm also from southern california i think people talk don't don't talk. don't talk about the difference between the two yeah northern california and southern california stark fucking differences very fucking different <laughs> like down to the mentality and the lexicon and the way that you sound when you speak like you're it's a different accent i've only been to san francisco and just for quick trips so yeah i mean it's super different um i do kind of identify with you because College was a big part of my using, so I blacked most of it out, and I feel really bad about that, and I don't have a lot of lasting friendships with people I did go to college with because I was blacked out, and a lot of them were just sort of like lower companions that I would drink or use with, and I would feel so mortified by what I did at Riley's over the weekend that I would stop going to classes where I knew there were people that I was in class mm. with that were at Riley's when I did it, so I just stopped going to school. So I totally get that it feels like you're in a fishbowl. Um, I was never in a sorority, but I kind of wished I had been. So I can't really relate to that. I do know that college is just four years of your life. And outside of it is so much more. Like I didn't blossom until after college. And I wish that I had been more present and found a community of people that I identified with then. But that wasn't my path in life. And I've made peace with that now like 10 years after the fact. But I think um, you've got another year left there. Break your conventions of what you think you're supposed to do and who you think you're supposed to be around there and find something that you truly love that makes your heart sing. And if you don't, try everything. Try everything while you still can. Give it your best college go. I'm sure there's some people that are very passionate about what they're doing that aren't so wrapped up in. I know a lot of yeah. the college experience is that. That's personally why I left. I looked around and I was like, oh, these people are like so out of their minds because this is the last time they feel they're ever going to be able to act this way. Yeah. And they're like, this is the like my last hoorah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't I want the rest of my life to be wonderful. I don't. And I think that's a common misconception about college. People are like, you're going to go to college. You're going to make your best friend in the dorms. You're going to be best friends for fucking life. You're going to get pregnant together and get married together and like have houses next to each other. And it's like, that's just not the truth. Th those are movies. We've all seen movies. They're not founded in reality. They're like these idealistic things that don't actually exist. So don't feel bad that this has been your experience, but make it your experience. Don't try to subscribe to what everybody else is doing. Try to find the joy. And if you don't find the joy, try to find the experience. 
experience all the things you want to. They offer like wine tasting classes. They offer golf classes. They offer scuba diving. There's a speech and debate team that I was on and I fucking love the speech and debate team. Like there's a million things that you could do and try before you graduate next year. And I suggest you do that. Get the most bang for your buck. Yeah. Also on the debate team, they give you 20 bucks when you go out of town to eat, (laughs) which is sick. (laughs) Um, But yeah, there's more to college and there's more to Chico State than Riley's and drinking. So just fucking dive in, dude. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. We're going to put that first six minutes of audio only here now. How (laughs) dare you call me a bad actor in my own home? After I asked you to do a single take of a bit for my vlog and you failed literally four times in a row on camera. No, I camera. did. I performed for you Chris, wonderfully. Chris. And the thing about Lizzie is she's always like, if I don't get it on my vlog, it wasn't meant to be. Chris. And guess what? She started doing take two, take three, take four. And but I let's served talk about every why. single time. Let's talk about why. Why? Let's because talk about Because you didn't the serve, baby. I Chris, serve. you're unmuted. Tell oh, the audience no. what you witnessed. Oh, no. I mean, he definitely went off book, off script. I was and, giving uh... the editor something to work with. They didn't like the first take they had options baby i'm versatile are we gonna I'm have to put to the work. footage in so that people know do you want to i'm rolling now okay go take two take Even two though you don't do take twos whatever i don't think my neck matches my face today does it ever yes. that's just me being a bitch we're gonna have to go take three what are you fucking kidding me no because i want to go yes and then you go that's just me being a bitch and me saying yeah that's why i wasn't offended do you want to come over here and lick me no <laughs> Did you notice that my face doesn't match my neck? Who? Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Did you notice my face didn't match my neck? Uh, We're done here. <laughs> this is literally why you're not a famous actor, because you're a fucking failure. <laughs> now you're scared to go past that? You pussy. Jack Harlow thinks he can act. Well, I know he knows he can act. He found freedom in acting. Should and we? guess what, baby? I can act, too. <sighs> Shane had a dream the other night. He woke up and he came downstairs and he was like, I had a dream you were on a sitcom and it was so vivid. And I was like, and that's why I married you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Me after my manager meeting last night, I told Joe, I was like, I just know we're going to make so much fucking money together. <laughs> Joe was like, I love that manifestation. And I was like, I feel it. It'd be fucking stupid if we didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm in a good mood today. I am too. I also have bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you should wait? Do you want me to just never tell you and just do it? Well, okay, tell me. I've lost hope for our Christmas film. Oh my gosh, why? Oh. And at the Your same, manager didn't like the pitch? I didn't pitch it to the manager. Oh, well. It's off brand for what I'm pitching myself as to her. Okay. Sorry, love you. Told her about and it. And so what's wrong with our movie? I'm going to rewrite it so that it's uh, two 22-year-olds. Wow, okay. I know. I'm aged out. We this aged out of our own movie. This is Hollywood ageism, and I'm facing it from my own partner. Does it hurt? Yes. Oh, we're always going to have our draft. <laughs> We're always going to have our draft baby, but Well, I think once I get an agent that responds to me, baby girl, I'm taking it full force. It's going to be Addison Rae and Jack Harlow playing us. Wow. They're both going to be in red face. Oh, that's an actual thing. I meant ginger hair. (laughs) I meant ginger hair. Okay, we'll just pick it up. They're both going to be in. (laughs) Ginger hair. No, you pick up the whole line. They're both going to be wearing fake ginger hair. (laughs) (laughs) What should I do one more I time? I can't believe... They're both going to be in fake ginger hair. I cannot believe <laughs> that you're giving up on us. And now I'm taking this as a competition. Like, you can try to sell your version. I'll try to sell our version. Oh. Go for it, baby. Whatever. I'm on a sitcom like two minutes ago anyway. Oh, I'm not not writing our sitcom also. <laughs> oh, we have a sitcom now? I've told you this. It's on the pod. I've said I think we have a great sitcom concept between the two of us because our characters are so stupid. Okay. <laughs> We're like a different version of Jack and Karen. I felt violently sick last night after what we had endured. And we're not oh, wearing the same outfit. Chris doesn't even know what we did. Oh, yeah. We left you out, Chris. Chris, we're only rolling for 30 minutes today. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. Last night, uh, like very last minute, I was like trying to think, what are we going to do for this episode of the show? And I found these like uh, cheese. You would have loved it. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> uh, cheese. Jesus cheese Christ. Cheese dogs. Yeah. And they weren't open on Mondays. And I already knew you weren't available on Sunday because you had told us you weren't and Lizzie was at the mall one minute from this place and I was like I'm picking you up right now because I have to find my friends and I said we're going and we're trying these cheese dogs so you're <laughs> just is, gonna have to watch it with everyone else Chris this is also <laughs> super funny because I love when Joe tracks my location because he always does it if I don't respond to his text messages and he knows he has to go into Liam Neeson like taken right. mode and so 
he was like, yeah, I mean, like, what's weird about that? And I was like, well, it is weird that Ryland will just wake up sometimes and look at all of our locations. <laughs> I was like, there's a difference. There's a difference between what you're doing and what he's doing. <laughs> well, no, but then at the same time, Lizzie will be like, you don't know where I am. Don't you have my location? So it's like a love No, he'll be like, what's up, bitch? Like, why aren't what? you responding, you bitch? Well, yeah, if she doesn't respond to me, I immediately look at her location. No, but sometimes he doesn't. He's like, what's better than me? And it's like, you can see that I'm at the gym. Whatever. I go two places. Your oh, house and the gym. Why are we filming for thirty minutes? I missed. Um, oh, because we filmed yesterday. You missed all of that, Chris. Oh, because that's all a part of this. I'm stupid. Right. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I thought maybe it was a vlog. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're no, just doing he... different things to try to get people to watch our show, Chris. <laughs> he drove around in the middle of the street looking for good lighting. It Always. was fucking <laughs> horrifying. You, I probably honestly saved your life with you not there. Uh, and to be completely honest with you, we were both so fucking sick well we overdosed it's not a them problem it's no us problem. we shouldn't have had four you want to know what i think it's because i had an empty stomach i forced myself to have something of substance after that like a few right. hours later and then it did take away my sickness i blacked out the entire huge, drive home huge problem um but we'll see you next wednesday we love you very much and follow all of us on social media and then we'll see you again next wednesday have fun in new york thank you okay we love you very much goodbye goodbye and, and that's, that's the, the sip, sip.